Good afternoon and welcome to Stadium MK for today's Sky Bet League One fixture with Accrington Stanley. We would like to thank our official partners, Suzuki. Right, let's look at some selected stats of both teams. The Dons find themselves in 16th place in the League One table after four defeats and one draw. With three defeats, one draw and a single victory in their last five games, Stanley sit in 10th place. As the attacking stats show, the Dons have a higher ratio in goals scored, assists, passing completed and attacking duels won. However, in the defensive stats, it's Accrington who come out in top in defensive actions, interceptions, aerial duels and ball recoveries. Looking at the Duns team stats, Cameron Jerome is still the clear leader, though Scott Fraser is now in contention and the talented Will Grigg is now featured. Accrington Stanley's top goalscorer is Dion Charles, with Colby Bishop and Joe Pritchard close behind. With regards to team news, Ben Gladwin missed Tuesday's clash with an ankle injury and has yet to be confirmed if he'd be fit enough for today. Hopefully, we will see him. With regards to Accrington Stanley, Accrington's duo Colby Bishop and Seamus Connolly both missed Tuesday's 4-1 defeat to Bristol Rovers. They join the injury list that contains the likes of Ross Sykes, Joe Pritchard, Nathan Baxter and Ryan Cassidy. The new Suzuki Hybrid Range. For you, me, her, him, everyone. The current club was formed in 1968, two years after the collapse of the original Accrington Stanley, founded in 1891. They were promoted to the Football League in 2006 after winning the 2005-06 Football Conference. Accrington had been without a football team following the collapse of the original Stanley team back in 1966. That team had been formed in 1891 and played in the Football League from 1921 until March 1962. It had to spend its final four seasons in the Lancashire Combination League. At a meeting at Bold Street Working Men's Club in 1968, the revival was initiated and in August 1970, the new club played at a new ground, the Crown Ground. Manager Coleman had a long playing career, mainly in long league football for Kirby Town and a long list of other clubs. He was one of the most prolific non-league goal scorers in history, with over 500 goals to his name. This success saw him play for the England national team and receive many Player of the Year awards from the clubs he played for. He was appointed player manager for Ashton United in 1997. After two years he joined Accrington Stanley, then playing in the Northern Premier League First Division. His 12 and a half year stay at the club won three promotions as champions and finally entered the Football League in 2006. Stanley's recent form has been indifferent. They suffered a 2-0 loss to Crew Alexander, a 1-0 draw with Fleetwood, a 2-1 loss to Ipswich Town, a 2-1 win at Swindon and then a 4-1 loss to Bristol Rovers. After rising through the youth ranks at Blackpool, in July 2016, Charles joined League One side Fleetwood Town on a two-year deal. He made his Fleetwood Town debut in an EFL trophy tie against Carlisle United. 
in 2017, Charles then joined the National League North side Halifax on loan until the end of the 2016-17 season. In January 2018, he then joined the National League North side Southport for an undisclosed fee. A year later in 2019, Charles then joined Accrington Stanley on a two-year deal. He's played 61 games for Stanley and hit the net 23 times. Pritchard joined the Tottenham Hotspur Academy in 2013. But while he was there, he suffered a knee injury that ruled him out. He was then released at the end of the 2017-18 season. Following his release from Spurs, Pritchard was signed on a free transfer by Bolton Wanderers. Pritchard then made his debut for Bolton Wanderers in 2019 against Preston North End. In May 2019, Pritchard joined Atkinson Stanley on a two-year deal with the option of a further 12 months. He's pulled the Stanley shirt on 50 times since and found the net eight times. Bishop signed his first professional contract with Notts County in November 2014. He made his first team debut for the Magpies in a 1-0 defeat of the MK Dons at Meadow Lane on Boxing Day. Then in May 2017, he was signed by National League Northside Leamington. He combined his playing career with a job in a school and made 49 appearances for the club and scored an impressive 28 times. Then in July 2019, he joined Accrington Stanley for an undisclosed fee. He's now run out 58 times for Accrington Stanley, notching up 18 goals. Following your heart, in spirit, in soul, you make every tackle, score every goal. You're part of it, wherever you are in the world. From the first minute, until the last kick. Victories, heartbreaks, you're part of the fabric, the passion, devotion, supercharging emotion. For you, there is only one. Abiding loyalty, togetherness that is second to none. Follow every kick, every tackle, every goal. With access to live stream games and match day commentary. With coverage spanning the globe. Behind the scene content, newsletters and match highlights. There's no better way for you to get closer to your club. And with I follow sales supporting them, there's no better way to show your love. Can't be there. Be there with I follow. Well, Goody, thanks for taking the time to speak to us. First chance we've had really to catch up with you in a while um, about the latest that's going on in the academy. Obviously, a difficult time for everyone with, with the pandemic still going on, the recent lockdown. What's it been like over the last few months in, in the academy? Um, in some ways, it's been uh Working as normal, you know, which the routine of uh, the under 18s being each day, being in each day, has helped us as a staff build a, a routine around that. Um, for the schoolboys, the, the nines to 16s, it's been a real stop start. Um, we started, I think, back in uh, September, October time, following new COVID procedures and then a lot of processes we had to learn and implement uh, to get the games going and get training going, and then. You know, within probably six six weeks, that was then shutting down again. Then there was an optimism around just after Christmas we'd restart, and then we did, and then we had to stop quite quickly. So, fair play to the staff and, and to the schoolboys. We've had a lot of interaction with them online um, through player care sessions, and pretty much across all the staff. From uh, last night, Lewis Johnson and Ryan Holmes are doing a, a Q and A with our schoolboys, to our sports science team uh, delivering uh, hit sessions for them, and just trying to maintain a dialogue and. We're thankful to come out the other side now and uh, we're due to start training uh, on Monday. You said, I mean, it's, it's easy to forget when you see the first team continuing and the 18s continuing. There's a lot of kids in there that, you know, for them, trying to impress, trying to develop as, you know, hopefully to become professional footballers. Every training session, every match counts and to lose so much time must be so frustrating for them. But I suppose one thing you've been able to see is maybe the mental side of it, you know, the resilience to, to, to continue through this, to continue working when, when things are tough. And I suppose you've, you've had a good opportunity to see that from your players. Yeah, we, and, and staff as well. Um, it's admirable what, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of what we've, we've, we've achieved, what we've tried to achieve. I think uh, we've been on the front foot wherever we could. Um, we had some changes within the academy. You know, we've all had to really dig in and, and provide as much support as we can. Uh, in some ways, you know, it's, it's enforced increased engagement with the first team for the under 18. So, you know, once COVID settled down a little bit and the, the lateral flow testing came in, you know, a lot of lads have had you know, significant time with the first team, either through training or, or, or playing matches. 
Um, and some of our younger guys, off the back of that, our U16s that have had more interaction with the under 18s at an earlier stage. So um, I guess it's like necessity is the mother of all invention. We've tried to be as creative as we can around giving as much opportunity as we can, whilst acknowledging that life is not normal for these guys. Absolutely. Um, let's focus on the under 18s then, because they have been able to kind of continue the whole way through this with the side of the FA Youth Cup, which we'll get on to. But how would you assess the season so far from, from, from the under 18s perspective? Um, I'm probably a hard taskmaster. I think league-wise, league in terms of team results, underachieved. Uh, we've got a strong group. Um, should win more matches than we do. And uh, that frustrates me. Um, and it's not a style thing. I think that's a, an edge to our performances. Uh, having said that, I'm really thankful for, for Russell and, and all the first team staff spending a lot of time around the academy players, watching our matches. Uh, inviting players in and to see you know, Charlie Smith, Lewis Johnson, Jack Davis, Tally's had involved with the, with the first team as well. And that, that's on pitch as well as the guys that have had you know, regular training sessions with them as well. So, uh, you know, for, as an academy manager, it's, it's a great sales pitch to any player looking for opportunity that we've got, you know, you know open pathway into first team. I said that's, that's the ultimate goal, isn't it? Of course, you'd want to win every game and win leagues and win cups, but... The ultimate goal is getting getting players into the first team and, and regularly so, and, and that's happened this year. And you said, you know, maybe out of necessity at times because of the way the squads are built this year and, and injuries. And but you've certainly got a manager in in Russell Martin that, that wants to give opportunities to younger players and a club that always tries to promote that as well. And we've seen it as you mentioned with the players that have come through and play for the first team with and, and signing pros. Yeah, and it gives. I've spoken about this before. A bit of pressure our end. Um, you know, I really desperate for the first team and for the club to be successful and the responsibility at our end is to provide players that add to uh, what, what Russ is looking to achieve and so that's not easy. Um, it's a very short path from 18s to first team but an enormous step you know and Lewis has shown what he's capable of. Jack Davis has had some time up there as well like I said Charlie has played minutes um, and I think there's more underneath that as well that, that, that can but I, I don't want to be support acts. I'm looking for them to come in and really impact the first team and, and help Russell be even more successful. And does it help? Well, I imagine it does help, but how much does it help having a, having a first team that have such a clear identity and a clear philosophy? Because it's just, you know, it is unique, it's challenging, and it's probably tough for these young lads maybe to get their head around it because there's going to be mistakes, but it must really help you with training and, and games when you've got such a clear identity coming down from the first team. It does, and, you know... <laughs> We, we've spoken at length, you know, and Russell's spoken at length about the identity of, of, of the team, but it's, it's a club philosophy. You know, it's, it's a way that Pete and the club view the game. And you know, Russ, I think there's nothing better for us as an academy, or if I'm a player myself, about clarity of, of my role. Um, our players you know, make similar mistakes. Our players sometimes shy away from the pressure a little bit, in, in, even in the games that they play. So you know, we're saying, hang on a minute, you're going to play in front of the crowd at a stadium pitch, where league points matter, so you better get used to it, playing for the under-18s, the under-16s, or the under-9s, you know, it's, it's the same principles that run through the club. But it also helps develop players, because it's not just relying on physical attributes, and obviously that does play a part, but, you know, certainly, you know, what a platform it gives for these young players to develop technically when they're being, you know, asked to do so much, you know, whether it's the striker or, or the goalkeeper, as we've seen with Russ's team. Absolutely, and... It's not an indulgent exercise. You know, it's a way of playing to develop players to win football matches, to be successful. And we're fully invested in that. And so I do believe for parents, for players, you know, when we're reviewing the games, there is a clarity around what we're trying to achieve rather than quick fixes or you know, you know, tr just trying to win with shortcuts. It's, 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 it's a, it's a long-term plan for success. We well, mentioned the, the players that have been involved in the first team. You mentioned a couple there that have been involved internationally as well with Tally recently being away at the under 20 African Cup of Nations which is you know probably in my, in my memory the first time any MK Lions Academy player has been involved in that tournament uh, and obviously Ryan Holmes recently getting called up for Wales as well you know continuing his development having been involved last season and the year before so how pleasing is that as well to see players get international recognition? Enormously it's a validation of, of the work they're doing uh, for Tally um, it's unfortunate that you know he's, he, he's fortunate he's had the tournament, but unfortunate he's away at a time where he may have had involvement with the first team as well. So we're hopeful when he when he arrives back in, he's he's fully up to speed and, and able to really kick on between now and the end of the season. Um, and for Ryan, the similar, he's he's steadily improving. Ryan, um, I think sometimes it's important for them when they go elsewhere 
a different message or a different environment, different players around them, uh, but hopefully similar themes around you know the essentials of what they're trying to achieve as footballers. So, yeah, um, I think yeah, we're looking forward to seeing Tally. I'm not quite sure when he's back, but <laughs> hopefully it's uh, this week and he'll be involved in the FA Youth Cup game next week. Well, perfect segue into that question. I mean, that that frustrating that that got postponed when it did. Um, you know, plenty of optimism and confidence after you know a win in the last round a big win here at Stadium K and the chance to, to play Leeds so frustrating it's taken so long to get to here but you know we are here and you know coming up the, the chance to, to really test yourself against you know a fantastic side in Leeds absolutely and uh, it's as close as the guys get emotionally I, I guess to playing a first team game you know the the attachment emotionally they, they, they place on the FA Youth Cup. We, we don't treat it any differently as staff. You know, it, it's the same preparation for every game, uh, similar messaging and similar philosophy is what we're trying to achieve. But for the players, they elevate the game and it's great to see them, you know, riding that pressure that they put upon themselves, coming up against teams they don't normally play against and hopefully excelling within the game. And you mentioned, when we come back to the under 16s, you mentioned that they're, they're coming back now to play and, you know, this is... I say it's the business end of the first team season. It's the business end of the academy season with decisions that have to be made between now and the end of the season. So, you know, a big couple of months, isn't it, for the under-16s? And, you know, I imagine they're just itching to get back playing football, aren't they? Yeah, we've been lucky. Uh, EFL guidelines were such that the 16s have continued to train with us and had a, have had involvement in the under-18s matches. We've made uh, six decisions so far in terms of positive decisions for, for players for next season. So, you know, they've, they've done very well. Um, we played a U17 fixture against West Brom uh, last Saturday. Um, really solid performance. It's almost like gearing that, that would be the team for next season. And we're excited. We're low on numbers, but we're high on quality. And we've got some interesting players that I do feel offer that little bit of edge, um, have game changing moments within their game. Um, we're just looking forward to getting them in the building and, and really developing them. I suppose looking forward then, it's just a case of. You know, say so continuing that work and you know the aim for for next year. I've seen a number of players come and play for the first team this year. It's about doing even more next year and and sustaining it in future years. Yeah, success attracts success, and you know from John Freeman at the start of the season, like I say Lewis Johnson, Jack Davis, you know hopefully get some involvement if if not this season, but for for next season as well as a professional. Um, we're an attractive club. You know the style that Russell and, and the first team staff play to attracts high quality players. That can only help us as an academy, plus the pathway into the first team. I really, you know, I want to shout from the rooftops about what an opportunity there is, and you know, look after the, 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 the real quality players we've got in the program, but be attractive to to more as well. Screwfix proudly supports football at home. Welcome to this weekend's fixture, MK Dons versus Accrington Stanley. Both sides will be looking for a win today. Accrington Stanley have come a long way since they were featured by name in the 1980s milk advert. Back then, they were a non-league team. After a gap of 44 years, Stanley has returned to the Football League during the 2006-7 season. And in the 2017-18 season, they won promotion to League One for the first time in the club's history. Today we are joined by Zach Jules for a quick fire round of Would You Rather. If you got any great Would You Rather questions to ask, you can email mui at mkdons.com. You never know, we may be asking your questions in the coming weeks. Okay, let's get started. Zach, would you rather travel the world for a year on budget or stay in one country for a year in the lap of luxury? Um, I'll stay in one country for a year. Living in life of luxury, why not? Where? Uh, Caribbean. Any island. Win £50,000 or let your best friend win a million pounds? Best friend win a million. Because, um, yeah, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> Be the star on an average team or an average player on a brilliant one? Um, average player in a brilliant one. Team game, it's all about winning. Would you rather spend a week on your own in a forest or one night in a haunted house? One night in a haunted house, I don't like the outside that much. 
Would you rather time travel to the past or into the future? Uh, to the past, I would let the future be whatever it's going to be. How about being forced to dance every time you hear music or forced to sing every time you hear music? Sing, because uh, yeah, dance is not really my thing. Have the ability to see behind closed doors or guess the combination of every safe on the first attempt? See behind closed doors, because um, I like a little nosy now and again. Would you rather have a body which was covered in fur or covered in scales? Fur, because it'll keep me warm. Give up showering for a month or give up social media for a month? Social media. Because, yeah, I can't do that. Hygiene's way forward, fellas. Have a massive feet or massive hands? Yeah, massive feet because, yeah, it will probably help playing football. Have a pause or rewind button? Mm, pause. Give me a time to assess situations. And finally, would you choose to go on a night out with Will I Am or Tom Jones? Will I Am, I don't know who Tom Jones is. What? Who's Tom Jones? Tom. Who's Tom Jones? Thanks, Zach. Very insightful. Sorry, Tom Jones. This week, our virtual mascot is Matthew Harris. Matthew was eight on Friday, so happy birthday from your MK Dons family. He goes to Finnerden Junior School and currently plays for Northampton Santos and is part of the Dons Under 8 pre-academy. His favourite player is Cameron Jerome because he has speed, agility and scores goals. Matthew thinks the Dons will win 2-1. We hope you're right. Thanks for being today's mascot. If you're a young Don, you should have received the new copy of the Young Dons newsletter this week. It's packed with fun facts and puzzles. There's also a competition to name the stadium's Peregrine Falcons and our first ever comic strip. Everyone can view the newsletter on mkdons.com. Just visit the Young Don section. Well, that's all from me, except, of course, to say, come on, you Dons! Baking life special moments. Hi everyone, hope you're safe and well. Um, just another catch up from me for another home game. You're going to have three of these in a week. Uh, so, <laughs> unlucky, you have to put up with me for those three occasions. Um, not much to catch up on really, apart from Tuesday's home game against Wigan. Obviously, uh, Blackpool rather. God, they're all rolling into one. Um, disappointing result, um, but on the whole, limited team to two shots. Um, really controlled performance, dominant. We didn't do enough in the final third, but it's given us... Uh, real clarity in where, where we need to work on, what we need to do to make sure we turn this um, recent run around, which we've all been frustrated with. Uh, I'm sure you feel the same way. But I do feel like we are getting back to somewhere um, to near our best performance. I really believe we're building back to that. Um, and obviously we're always striving striving for that. Um, but a lot of things change, change, uh, change or affect that. Um, we're having to change and adapt at the moment because teams are setting up in different ways now. I think... The run that we went on, guys, um, the guys have earned a lot of respect from other teams that perhaps we didn't have before. Um, so now we have to adapt and find different different solutions to different problems whilst maintaining what we believe in and our identity, which is really important to all of us here at MK Don. So, um, and hopefully you, you will feel the same way. So I hope you enjoy today's game. I don't think there's any injury news to, to report to you guys. Um, so I hope that we put in a performance that you enjoy and I hope we get back to winning ways uh, today um, because we need to. And, and always when there's been a bit of adversity with this group or a bit of suffering results-wise, they've always uh, bounced back and come through it really, really strongly. So hopefully that'll be the case today. So enjoy the game and I will catch up with you again on Tuesday.